and uh, you know, a few verses before we pray on those lines, right? Um, yeah, Isaiah 54 and verse 1 says, uh, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the mad woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For the Lord is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth, and so on. Um, but I just want to, you know, draw attention to the first few verses and also uh, the fact that the Lord is a redeemer, that uh, he will cause you not to remember the reproach of your uh, of your widowhood, of your youth, the shame of the youth, and so on. He's saying, you know, sing, O barren, uh, you, have not, you who have not born, break forth into singing, cry aloud, and so on. So, uh, you know, a, a response or a reaction, uh, which is very, very... Uh, spiritual and something which is contrary to the natural circumstance right uh, natural circumstance would uh, which would demand that you don't respond that way or you don't react that way to whatever is going on but uh, here's a here's a spiritual response because the lord is the lord is god and um, and he is saying all he's giving all these promises you will not be disgraced you will you know you will not be ashamed um you will forget uh, the the days you know the the shame of the youth and so on lord of hosts is his name the lord is your maker he is your husband and so on so um so this morning also I just felt that uh, you know as we pray that we would uh, we would praise god <clears throat> Uh, despite our natural circumstances, right? Uh, you know, each of us, we might be going through certain challenges. We might be going through some uh, some difficulties. Um, but what is our spiritual response to that? What is our response of faith to that? Um, that would depend on, you know, what does the word of God say? What is God? Who is God in that situation? Is it easy? Is he not our redeemer? Is he not the one who who declares? You know, you sing out, you uh, you enlarge the, your tents, you strengthen the stakes, which is totally the opposite of you know that situation. You know, for that for this person, um, uh, but that is what we are called. So let's let's do that, right? Let's just praise the Lord and let's thank Him and um, and. Let's just recall the promises of God. Let's recall who He is, and for each one of us, you know, it it will be um, uh, it will be something personal, something uh, you know, unique, uh, based on our difficulties. But we are going to, you know, just declare the opposite of that, right? Okay, so let's do that. Father, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for these verses that we have seen in Scripture, God, that, uh, Lord, our spiritual response, our response of faith, O oh God, to the difficulties or the circumstances that we are in, O oh God, is is totally the opposite, O oh God, that we will not be sucked in by, by circumstances, sucked in by difficulties, sucked, sucked in by the emotions of what is happening around us, God, but, but totally, Lord, stand um, in faith and respond in faith and declare out in faith, Lord, based on your word, O oh Father God. And, uh, Father, we see this... <clears throat> This act of faith, oh God, this instruction of faith to enlarge and to expand and to strengthen the stakes, even when there is there is nothing like that on the uh, on the horizon, Lord. There's nothing that our natural eyes can see, God, but we choose to do that. And, and this morning we we choose to praise you, Father God, because you are the God, Lord, who calls those things which be not as though they were. Lord, you are the God, oh God, who exhorts us to sing, oh Father God, you say sing, oh Baron, Lord, when we don't. Sing, see that promise Lord called us to sing and so we choose to do that Father God and we choose to declare oh Father God yes um, let's just take this time to 
you know declare certain personal things in your own lives um things that are personal things that are maybe even private um, so uh, you know in the quietness of your heart or you know in the quietness of the wherever you are um, just declare that just sing that out to god and say lord yes i will sing i will sing i will sing despite my emptiness i will sing despite the circumstance i will sing based on your word i will um, the song is a song of faith the song is a song that declares uh, and calls out those things which be not as though they were so you know we just sing that out and declaring that father we thank you god we thank you god we thank you you've called us to walk in your likeness oh master and this is uh, this is how you walk oh god this is what you do you call those things which be not as though they were god and we choose to do that this morning almost hey, thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you god <clears throat> thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah thank you thank you lord shomo te ke ne musibe oh we thank you we bless your name thank you shomo te pe pe pa 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 so pa pe 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 shi pa 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 se pe te pa oh yes we declare it we declare it so shobar ko bhi pa 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 declare he shall be 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 or mosse kere re me bhi pa 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 thank you thank you father god we bless your name lord we give you all the praise of father god hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus praise you lord thank you thank you thank you father god thank you for who you are lord yes lord we thank you that who you are does not change god with our circumstance oh god all with difficulties of oh father god lord all with mountains in the way all with rivers oh father god all with the seas red sea even though red sea something like a red sea kind of a environment or difficulty god or a fiery furnace god lord you do not change lord you are the same yesterday and today and in all our tomorrows you lord you are the same god we thank you we thank you for the assurance lord of uh, steadfastness of your character we thank you the lord that uh, but your your truth never changes father god and your love never changes oh father god your grace and mercy father god indeed lord Uh, so new every morning for our god we thank you we thank you we bless your name and we give you all the praise and glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen eromo se kere amen amen oh yeah i'm just uh, reading what uh, charles has written visions of rapture now burst on my sight mm. amen Yeah, yeah. Fanny Crosby, quite an inspiration. No? So many hymns, so many songs that she's written, and praise God. Yeah. Okay, so um, I hope you had a good uh, day yesterday, and uh, yeah, um, we are going to look at um, uh, last class. We looked at uh, the ministry of the word. right why is the word word of god the bible and the message in scripture the truth of scripture so important for us to um, for that to be part of the truth that we are declaring like right? the message um so um and also i hope you got a chance to read the um book god's word the miracle seed um and uh, for those of you who have not yet uh, read through i just want to encourage you to read through it and um in one uh, say i think it's in page uh, i forget the page number but um, in one of the chapters you read about the meditation meditating on god's word contemplation visual visualization and uh, and so on so you know really memorization and uh, really it helps us to uh, you know to to uh, to be anchored to the word of god next so that's so why the word of god is uh, Uh, is there's a rich deposit of the word of god in our hearts right like we see in uh, colossians 3 that the word of god be um you know there, let there be a rich deposit of his word uh, in our spirit and so uh, when we minister uh, whether <clears throat> prayer or worship or you know in the word and especially when it comes to preaching there's a you know holy spirit uses that Oh, that's the material right so we go back to it uh, holy spirit pulls us i mean pulls out uh, the revelation that he's put in our hearts and also uh, guides our eyes to you know to look at uh, new and wonderful things in in the word and that is what really uh, brings about change 
right, in people's lives, transforms people's lives. So we looked at that. Um, Okay, towards the end of the previous chapter, we also see uh, some more information, uh, some more, um, uh, you know, points about uh, the fact that we educate people, you know, with the word of God, and um, and uh, this truth comes comes out in these scriptures, you know, uh, Jeremiah three fifteen and Isaiah four six, where it declares over and over again, my people die or perish for the lack of knowledge. Right, and many times it's ignorance that leads people astray. Many times it's uh, uh, you know, ignorance of the truth of God's word, who they are, and and the rights and privileges a person has, the authority a person has as a believer, and and the possibilities of living a righteous life, and all that. You know, the hope is gone, and and even as a believer, there's so much struggle and so much pain, um, and uh, you know, so much of compromise because uh, because of, of a lack of knowledge, of lack of application of knowledge, also. Right. So so we so that is why. You know, uh, uh, as a communicator of God's truth, we communicate the truth of God's word, which is uh, which which is a carrier of God's power, like we saw, right? Um, so today we look at okay, we ha I have this written word. I have, and it's wonderful that we have uh, the Bible with us in so many languages, um, in so many forms, in print, in digital, uh, you know, in electronic form, and so on. So how do I study the word of God? You know, is there one way to study it? Um, well. There is no one set way of studying the Word of God, um, uh, because uh, you know we have so many different ways of uh, uh, reading, going through. Uh, so we're going to look at a few of those, and um, and all these are good, right? All, all, all these methods or ways of studying, but all these are good. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Uh, I'm on page uh, of sixteen, which is chapter six of. Uh, of our notes <laughs> excuse me um so for the first one is um the word study okay so um when we look at uh, the word study which simply means that we look at uh, individual words um uh, of the bible bible text individual words uh, of the of the bible and uh, um and we study the that word which comes in scripture right throughout scripture like for example um, you know the word love we know that in the greek it's translated into you know in, in the english language for example it's it's one word love but we know that there are different um, you know like filio eros um, agape right so it's uh, it's good to study uh, the, uh, so when we do a word study, we take the word and we see how it is applied throughout scripture, how it is there um, present and how it is used throughout scripture. And we get a better understanding of it. Otherwise, our understanding will be deficient and we will think of it as, you know, God so loved. Yeah, he loved. But then when we look at, uh, you know, the, the original language and uh, study it, we get to understand that, yes, um, well, there's uh, you know, different words that are used here. Uh, same as uh, you know uh, the word that we learned uh, in praise and worship, right? Uh, when we say praise, uh, where there are different words that are used, like yada and toda and tehila and uh, halel and and so on, zamar. So we we get a deeper understanding uh, when we study that, right? So um, so a word study. Okay. So we can. Uh, the, what would help? in studying uh, uh, or aiding this study would be to use uh, you know maybe different translations to use a com contemporary translation to to help us in the um, word study uh, we can also use a, a dictionary okay uh, a dictionary of um, old testament and new testament words and uh, we can use that um, uh, we, we can use that you can use the uh, uh, strong's dictionary or thayer's dictionary of uh, Hebrew and Greek, uh, and uh, find that particularly useful um, for a study Bible, which which gives you, you know, uh, I used to, I mean, I, I still have the study Bible, uh, Spiritful Life study Bible, which gives, um, you know, some of these uh, Hebrew and Greek side by side, uh, even as we study. Um, and for example, and it, it also explains in a 
you know, in a very nice way. So I found that very useful uh, while studying. So like, for example, the word worry, uh, which we find in Matthew, Matthew 6, I think, like where, where the Lord says, uh, you know, uh, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink um, for uh, after all these things the heathen seek right uh, is it matthew 6 um, yeah matthew 6 25 right and the word they use there is merim now merim now or merim now uh, which uh, which means to be preoccupied and um, and the and the original language translates or gives a picture like this it's about um, something that is cut into different pieces Okay, where uh, you know, if your mind is uh, like divided into different pieces, it's like each piece is preoccupied with something else, where you're not able to focus. So is worry. So is uh, so the Lord says, do not worry about your life. Do not be preoccupied. Do not be worried. Let it not occupy so much. Right? Uh, these questions like, what I will, what will I? eat what will i drink what will i put on no there not be a constant preoccupation so that you know you're not really able to live your life right um so uh, so things like that would, would really help us if you go back to the original language and study it and we can use uh, you know a study bible we can also use something called e sword uh, m sword i think um, most of you uh, would be using it uh e sword it's just a download uh, it's a free download. MSOD also is a free download. Uh, ESOD is for your uh, laptops or your computers, and MSOD is for your you know mobile devices. Um, so you can download that, and uh, I also use that extensively, and it's it's, it's quite uh, you know quite nice, very useful, very helpful. Okay, and some online tools also, which really help us um, to do word studies. Okay, so um, so a word study. That's one way of uh, studying the Bible. And uh, so we are going beyond, when we say study the word, we are going beyond our uh, usual meditation, our, uh, you know, our quiet times of you know, reading through and uh, spending time and engaging uh, you know, with God. Right? Uh, we're supplementing that. You know, we're not um, replacing that with this, but we are actually supplementing that. So that is very important. When we, you know, when we just spend time, <coughs> just soak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. When we spend time just soaking in, just taking in what God is saying, and maybe sometimes you're just stuck on one verse, and uh, you're stuck there for about a week or something, right? And uh, not going beyond that. And there's so much there which God is revealing, and so. Yeah, you know something like that. So you're doing that, but you're supplementing that, right? Uh, so uh, here, a study is we're going beyond that. We are actually, um, you know, uh, going further, deeper, and uh, we are going back, uh, back you know, into the nuts and bolts of things. And so that's the study. It's not just a casual reading or even a, you know, a reading and engaging and praying. We're going beyond that, right? Okay. Um, then it can be a topical study so a topical study how about the blue bible okay so blue bible is, is it um are you talking about david guzik chris um i think it's uh let me just type out the name david guzik is it is that the one because i've heard about it uh So um, yeah, David Guzik. Yeah. Um, so what I would say is, uh, yeah, it, it's really helpful. You know, the historical background. Uh, David Guzik, of course, is kind of well balanced and, and so on. So we can use that. Uh, uh, commentary also will be helpful. But uh, I would say, you know, uh, not to rely heavily on the commentary uh, because uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, like David Guzik is is quite good, um, uh, you know. But, but sometimes, depending on the background of the you know the Bible commentators, um, like certain Bible commentators totally negate the work of the Spirit, or uh, they have a totally different take on it. So that would be you know that would 
that won't be helpful right so like uh, they are cessationists you know they just believe that um, well you know the, the work of the holy spirit uh, stopped ceased you know with the early church and with the apostles you know it just ceased and now uh, the work of the holy spirit is in convicting and and all that but, but you know when it re relates to the gifts and the um and so on so that is not uh, and so i'm just putting that here so the um so that's the one abhishek uh, and so and if any of you know any of other mobile apps you can also put it in the thing so abhishek uh, can check that out um okay so so that's the thing so not to uh, lean heavily on the commentary but of course we can always you know, check and see another perspective but to be aware you know now that you know okay you've studied certain things and uh, you know you know so uh, to be aware like when you read uh, so that's the thing uh, excuse me <laughs> I'm, my throat is really um okay so topical study so when we do a topical study so that means it's uh, something uh, you know a topic or a theme it's a thematic bible study so it can be a, a theme like uh, the love of god or it can be a theme like the grace of god or the mercy of god or uh, uh, you know several other themes right uh, whatever theme that you can uh, so you you choose a topic or a theme and similar to how we do the word study we we look at that theme or topic um, uh, through right through you know, the bible right through the old testament and the new testament and and see um, uh, we kind of uh, what what are the uh, findings you know we categorize it and uh, okay we look at the you know differences you know like if you can look at work of the holy spirit well um, so you see the differences you know this is how we worked uh, like how we studied you know, the holy spirit um, we did that chapter the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the work of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. So it was one theme, but we were looking at it, you know, right through uh, the Old Testament uh, uh, scriptures. Then we looked at the New Testament scriptures, and specifically we looked at the Book of Acts um, to see the work of the Holy Spirit. So that would be a, a topical or a thematic study. So then we, you know, we get some conclude, we get some inferences, and uh, and we see, okay. Uh, so this is how he worked. These these are I mean it, it really widens our scope, right? Of uh, the the kind of ministry or the uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know it's so diverse, uh, and it's it's beyond what we actually imagine. It's so diverse, but the way he worked in the Old Testament was different, uh, and now we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So we we, we you know we, we come to, we draw those inferences when we do a uh, thematic uh, study right <laughs> excuse me so um so to look at uh, a, a concordance would help you know if you're looking at uh, a, a bible I, I think some of the bibles have concordances um you know either in the end of the bible or the beginning of the bible uh, so you, you can you know look at a concordance um like my bible has a concordance um but it's a concordance of words and not really a theme so um yeah so that would that would be helpful also right so we can use that um okay then um so that's the topical study okay the other thing is would uh, you know a very interesting one would be a character study um so this is about people uh, in the bible characters uh, in the bible uh, persons in the Bible that we um, that we uh, look at, we study their lives, and then we, we draw some inferences from their lives. How, how did, uh, you know, uh, they relate to God and so on. So if you look at 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, okay, 1 Corinthians 10, let me just put it there, um, 10 and verse 11, okay. Um, so it says now all these things happen to them as examples and they were written for our admission upon uh, sorry admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come okay it's talking about uh, you know all that happened uh, to the children of israel and uh, you know through their exodus and and, and all that right it's referring to that um, 
So it says um, it happened to them as you know examples that and for our admonition, for our warning, uh, so that we can we need to live righteously and so on. So so we know that uh, we can study the uh, different characters, different people in the Bible, and uh, and some of the things that we can learn from you know uh, some from their characters. You know. um, uh, like how did uh, how did God relate to them? How do they relate to God? Um, the kind of encounters they had with God, the kind of conversations they had with God, um, and uh, you know the kind of uh, faith they had. Uh, very inspiring, motivating. We can also look at some of the negative things, right? Um, what were their fears? What were their faults? Um, you know, how did God use them despite those things? And also, um, uh, did they overcome any of their faults, or did they continue with their faults, and and so on? So, uh, so we can, you know, study the uh, characters in the Bible, and uh, you know, we can learn quite a bit from them. So now, uh, one of the things to keep in mind. Um, you know, to study when we study about the characters in the Bible is to know, um, is to keep in mind, um, you know, what is the uh, dispensation in which they lived, right? What is the dispensation? Um, dispensation meaning, you know, were, were they before the cross um, uh, and or was it after the cross, right? Or during that time, you know, what is the dispensation that they lived in? Now that is also important because many times we we leave leave out that one bit, the dispensation of the times, and then we can come to some erroneous conclusions, right? Um, so this is what happened in David's life, or this is what happened with Abraham. So therefore, you know, these are some limitations and so on. So we, but the fact is that we, um, the scripture talks about in one Corinthians how it's a better co covenant that we are living in, right, on better promises. And uh, the Holy Spirit indwells us the way he works, the, the, the kind of revelation um, that has been given to us um, is, uh, is something far beyond uh, what the Old Testament saints walked in, okay? So, um, so that is a reality that we need to bear in mind, okay? The, um, so, um, like say Ananias and Sapphira, or, or uh, you know some of those things that happened there. They, they they lived in a special dispensation where there was great grace. There was, it was a time of outpouring. Uh, it was a time of uh, you know uh, great power being revealed and so on and and so also there was great fear of you know because of what happened in their lives, right? So we we see that and uh, and so. Will God strike me dead? You know, if I lie, or you know, is there a point of no return, etc.? You know, we I need to understand what is the dispensation. What is how does God, uh, uh, you know, deal with me in all this, and and so on. So that will help us, like when we do a character study. So we can learn a lot. You know, what lessons can we learn from their lives? What lessons can we learn from their um, from their accomplishments? Um, what are the things that we can learn, even from the negative side, right? Um, what are the flaws that they had, the things that they did not do? Um, what are the lessons that we can learn? So things to avoid, those are lessons as well, right? Okay, a character study. Then we do what what we can call a book study. Now that's, uh, again, going to the book study will, it's going to take a lot more engagement uh, of our time, uh, of our, uh, you know, uh, of our, uh, uh, basically, our yeah, time and, and focus and concentration. It's going to take a lot more. So a book study. So uh, it's, uh, it's a little more challenging because we're going to spend a lot of time and we're going to look at the background. We're going to look at, uh, you know, several things, right? We're going to look at themes and topics and uh, cross-references and words and so on. So um, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a very useful um, it's a useful uh, exercise when we do a uh, Bible uh, book study because we, some of our verses, right, some of the scriptures that we uh, probably, these are our favorite scriptures and we've been declaring and etc. We see it in the light of the actual context of usage, right? 
right uh, like we may not be using it you know uh, erroneously we may not be using it that way but uh, but actually when we look at the context in which um it is used then it gives us a better understanding right okay this is the context in which it is used right, right. Uh, i think we looked at that verse earlier where uh, the paul talks about how he can do all things right through christ who strengthens me okay. i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and then we see that it is in the context of um, him going through difficulties and him overcoming those difficulties or he says that um, you know i know how to abound and i know how to be a base um, um, and i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so um, so we see that uh, that is the context well we can use it and we can say i can do all things you know i can climb this mountain and i can do this uh, and i can accomplish this um, well there's nothing wrong because definitely you know it is scriptural because uh, the other scripture talks about how he will lead us in a triumphant procession in Christ Jesus so we can use that but the actual context is that he's saying you know despite difficulties i know how to live a contented life i know how to you know if everything is there or if things are removed i can do all things through christ i can live uh, that way through christ who strengthens me right so we we come across these things and we learn so we look at the uh, some of the geographical geography of the place we look at the historical background of the place and and then we're able to even appreciate it better like uh, you know right now we're doing a study of uh, uh, corinthians for the third years it's a verse by verse study so we uh, we read about the kind of um, place corinthian um, the, the corinthian city was right a commercial uh, place a buzzing commercial uh, place um, a very very um, uh, what's the word um, very very uh, loose morals right um in fact uh, when they say a corinthian girl that means a girl who's a you know a, a prostitute a woman who's a prostitute and so on so very loose morals even their worship was uh, the temple worship where they had you know it is said that they had temple prostitutes um so both men and women and it was the temple of aphrodite the goddess of uh, love um and so on so in, in such a place um, paul went and spent 18 months or more and uh, from such a place you know uh, uh, believers were raised and the church was raised church was established and a buzzing church right vibrant church especially with all its problems but a vibrant church again so then we are able to appreciate right when we do a book study we see that wow oh this was you know this was a church and these were all the problems then and uh, begin to appreciate the the work um, that uh, that well Paul did, depending on the spirit of God and and all that. Right. So so book study is uh, is very good, very um, uh, very useful. Right. So uh, when we study the background, we study uh, an outline of the book, <laughs> and right from the greetings, we we learn several things okay the way uh, in which these episodes were written the greetings there some of those things recurrent the recurrent themes that are there and, and so on right? and and the applications uh, very very valuable that we can uh, derive from that okay then the um yeah then the other thing uh, other uh, way to study would be the inductive study method so inductive and uh, uh, Inductive meaning, um, inductive uh, reasoning, like it's so. Uh, uh, generally speaking, when you look at uh, you know logic, it talks about two things, right? Uh, inductive and deductive. Um, so inductive would be, sorry, uh, moving from specific observations. So you look at certain things, some specific observations, and then we we form some generalizations or we come to certain conclusions right so it's looking at specific things okay this is how god dealt this is how god uh, did so therefore this is his character and nature okay so it's a, it's a inductive um, study um, inductive study would be um, typically it would be a study where we are studying uh, about a passage <clears throat> 
let's say uh, a common theme is uh, running between a few chapters across a few chapters and uh, we take that and apply the inductive method so inductive method where we ask certain questions like uh, you know even as we study we ask certain questions like what does this passage say okay, this whole passage that we are looking at um, what does this passage say um, and what does this passage mean you know uh, this is this is what it says so what would, what is the interpretation right um, and then the application you know what is god telling me how can i apply it um, so those would be three uh, you know main things three main steps okay the first one would be to um, to observe to observe the passage observe the text uh, let me just put it here okay. so um, observe what is in that passage observe what is in that text okay uh, secondly we do uh, uh, okay what does it say what does it mean what does it say so that would be uh, interpretation okay and uh, third thing would be the application so this is uh, in a simple manner you know this is these are the three steps that we would be applying and it's a uh, inductive uh, study right um okay Right. So, so when you expand it, you know we have all these uh, questions, like what does it say? What does it mean? What is God telling you? How I am, you know, when you personally apply it, uh, how can I be encouraged and strengthened um, through all this uh, and so on? You know, and personal uh, in, in, in introspection: you know, Is there sin in my life? Um, how is there something that is affecting me, uh, preventing me? And all those things, all those questions would come in the application. Bit. Right. Okay. So, um, any questions so far, or any any thoughts on what we shared uh, till now? Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, you know, all these methods are. Uh, I mean, there's no right or wrong. You know, we uh, methods have their limitations when we look at it as, uh, uh, you know, look at it in isolation, right? But when we when we involve or when we allow the Spirit of God to to teach us, to give us insight and revelation, then 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 it changes, right? So no method is perfect. Uh, it it allows us to go so far, um, but uh, you know when the Holy Spirit teaches us, when the Holy Spirit breathes life on uh, you know certain things that uh, yeah any uh, so that would help us right any tools or materials that would help in character study well character study um, the same uh, thing that we can use you know uh, if it is uh, uh, you know. Well, one one thing to keep in mind is when you are studying a character. Um, I think I think this happened when uh, I think Avni Avni actually asked that question. Is it when you're talking about uh, Philip uh, in the other class, um, Minister Evangelist Pastor, Minister of the Evangelist Pastor Teacher, and uh, we saw Philip as the evangelist. So she was asking, that, is it the same Philip as the apostle? So so that is one thing to keep in mind. You know, when we are studying about characters, you know, uh, they have similar names, but um, is it the same person, right? To to really uh, find that. So, any tools or materials that would help us? I, I would say the same same tools, uh, the same uh, concordance that would help us. Um, I, I really can't think of any specific uh, tool, uh, Prabhaka, uh, that would help. I think, uh, yeah, these would really help. Uh, <clears throat> Any other questions that you might have? Um, which method is for groups, but uh, group Bible study? Okay, so so it depends on uh, what uh, you're doing as a group, uh, Avni. Right, uh, you know, as a group, 
if you're doing a Bible study, now what is it that you're studying? Um, it would depend on that, right? Uh, so, um, so your question is okay. Do we do a word study? Do you do a you know topical study? Um, I think that's that's what you you and that's a, that's your question, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean it, it depends uh, what the group wants to do. Um, all these all these are good, uh, you know. And also, if the group is a little mature and um, you know these are mature believers, then you can just go in for a book study, you know and uh, depends on the age and uh, maturity um, of the group otherwise you know if if it's uh, let's say children and uh, it's great to do a character study um, or a word study um, and uh, yeah even a topical study like issues you know like peer pressure or um, compromises and, and things like that and do a topical study so it, Really depends on the mix of the group. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, like I, I know people who, who don't do any of these things, right? Um, uh, I mean, these are helpful tools. Just these are suggestions, helpful tools for us to. You know, really use, and uh, and these are good, right? <laughs> um, but I know people who who don't, you know, who read through huge chunks of uh, scripture, and uh, and God teaches them in certain unique ways. So, yeah, so that is also something, you know, um, but God highlights certain scriptures, and I just meditate on that, uh, and then. It's another scripture he highlights and he meditate on that, and it's all you know. It's all coming together, and uh, yeah, so something very unique. Like I know of a person who uh, uh, she is quite illiterate in the sense. Uh, I think I may have shared. Uh, I'm sorry if, I, if I'm just repeating it, but she, but she is illiterate in the sense uh, she cannot read or write. Right, so she cannot read or write, and she's very illiterate in the sense even with numbers, um, she's not good. Um, so on her phone, she's got a mobile phone, so she remembers things like, okay, this symbol, you know, is that person's name or something like that. So it's uh, she's very, very, um, you know, uh, ignorant of all those things. But God uses her mightily. And the way she, God teaches her is when she gets up in the morning, she hears the audible voice of God. Right? She, so she gets up, prays, hears the audible voice of God. God gives her instructions. Um, and of course, like heavily into dreams and all that interpretation. So God gives her uh, uh, the instruction for the day, what she needs to do, whom she goes needs to meet, etc. Sometimes it's just, you know, stay at home, pray. Um, and he, there's a, like a direct download of huge uh, chunks of scripture in her spirit, in her heart, right? So she, while praying, she will quote certain scriptures and say, you know, uh, you know, this is what God is saying, and then, and it'll be very, very apt and exact. Uh, but she hasn't read it herself, right? She hasn't read the, the scripture herself. So I remember once we got her a, um, one of those audio Bibles where you, she can just hear the thing. I don't know if she uses it though. We didn't want to, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, we didn't want to mess up the way God teaches with her, but uh, teaches her. But we just felt that, uh, you know, um, that she needed to know the word. So we just helped her with an audio Bible. So I, I'm not uh, so sure whether she uses it. Um, so uh, Abhishek, I'm just checking. Um, you know, Esod. Uh, is something so this okay? This is eSword for Android. I'm just checking this one uh, search. Yeah, so there's a um, eSword Android free version. Um, it won't be. I, I don't think it's on Play Store, but it's uh, it's on some other. Uh, let me just put the link here. My sword is it okay? Sorry, 
Okay. Uh, you can check out that link. And uh, yeah. Okay. Beulah says it's my sword. So you can check that as well. And uh, yeah. Um, as far as commentary go, comment commentaries go, I think you can use some of the standard ones uh, which are available. And David Guzik's is also good. It's pretty good. Um, and you can use that. Okay, my sword. I'm just checking. Uh, So there you go. Uh, these are some links. OK, uh, Kennedy, you have a question? Yeah. Now, inductively, how do you explain to a believer the difference between the faith mentioned in the Bible, which says we are given, faith is given to uh, a believer? I I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Kiran, I'm not able to hear. Uh, can you just, uh, it's not very clear. Would you like to put it on the chat? OK, let me do it. Let me put it on the chat. Yeah, OK. <laughs> now we have an another minute, so if you can just put it on the chat, then we'll look at it. OK. Sorry about that. Uh, it seemed to be a lot of um, noise in the background. OK, Thompson Chain Reference Bible. OK, so, so I'm sure Yeah, each of you have your favorite, and each of you have, uh, like Salome has put down, uh, the U version Bible has audio as well. Okay, that's good. Uh, I personally haven't tried U version, but uh, I know it's quite popular. A lot of people use it. Um, okay, so it's wonderful, right? We have all these tools you know, today uh, with technology, and uh, you know everything being digital, and we have all these available. Therefore, uh, one thing is there are no excuses for study of God's word. I, uh, there's absolutely, <laughs> um, absolutely no excuse uh, for studying God's word. Uh, it's just that we just need to, you know, carve out that time and uh, and do that. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a very uh, useful, very valuable time time well spent. Maybe because uh, you're studying the word, studying the truth, studying life-giving word um, it's just like uh, you know the Lord says you know the words that I speak to you they are spirit and they are life right they are spirit and they are life so and uh, of course you know man shall not live by bread alone but by every um, word that comes from the mouth of God proceeds from the mouth of God so every rhema right which is uh, of course uh, we get the, uh, the spirit of God quickens the rhema to us um, but we also have the logos, right? The, the written word, the, the the discourse, the thought, the description, the principles, and it's important for us to know that. Uh, and uh, and the rhema, the spirit of God will quicken the rhema for us, and which that is the sword of the spirit which we use in warfare, and that's that is what is uh, you know is required. Uh, Kennedy, I don't see your uh, question yet, so um, you could put it on the stream also, and I would uh, uh, check, um, you know, take a look at it during the day, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, and we'll continue uh, next next class when we meet, uh, which is on Friday. Okay, okay, right. Take care. Have a great day. God bless you all. Right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Right. God bless. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay,